Hello everyone, welcome to building the ultimate Matchbox car collection. My name is Tyrone and today we've got the Collector's Catalogue 1986-87 for a huge 30 cents. So if you're into this era of Matchbox, sit back for the next however long it takes to get through all 75. It will be ad free and uh, I'll try not to tell you too many random stories about what these cars mean to me because if you're watching this video they also mean a lot to you and you'll have your own story, your own history to each car. So it's much, much more about the cars than my stories today. Shall we kick it off? Uh, one little word I will say about variations. If you're a completist like me, it's easy to get very frustrated about variations. Uh, when I first started collecting matchbox cars, I was thrilled to get this after so many years of forgetting about it and of course you've got to get them all there's that one and there's that one and there's others and then the clangor drops and you realize you'll never get them all because this one's a bulgarian one if you're unaware of the bulgarian thing um, a company in bulgaria was licensed to recreate the matchbox toys under matchbox license and went for any color they felt like. So I have many of these around the place. You'll never get to the bottom of it, so don't drive yourself nuts. Uh, be happy with your collection, no matter how few or how many you have, and just enjoy. Here is another example. We all know that I only came out in red and white, but I have seven others, and I know there are far, far more. Again, this is the Bulgarian thing. Um, Hungarian castings also, apparently I don't have one. I'm yet to find one, but I know they're out there. Um, if I get bored enough one day, I'll do another search on eBay and see exactly what I'm missing. But uh, yeah, don't worry too much if you never get to the bottom of the variance pit. You may never do. Just enjoy. So, having said all that, Let's just get to number one. It is the Dodge Challenger. Um, this started life out as non-draggy in the red and white, then went to the blue and white. I'll show them all at some stage, I'm sure. You've probably seen them if you're a fan of this channel. This one made in China, not the uh, England we're all used to. And uh, I think this was the second iteration of the drag version. It came out in a musty version with the blue roof. I have it, but I'm only going to bring out what I need for this show today. I'll probably do a, a show on all the years that I can, but um, one at a time, please. Uh, number two, Pontiac Fiero with the 85 on the bonnet. Looks kind of grey in that photo, and we'll get to that issue as well um, with the internet now. Uh, it's much easier to do thorough research, but when we were kids um, in 83, 86, <laughs> um, all you had was the uh, photos in the in the brochure, pamphlet, whatever you want to call it. Um, can look at that, made in Macau. Lovely eight dot wheels and a bit of suspension, not much. It is a racer. Number three is the black Porsche. We saw this first in silver and green or the other way around, um, brown for some markets. And then they went kind of funky with the turbo and spectacularly well done opening doors. I see the um, moving parts for 2022 has a Carrera, I think, with opening doors. And of course, the uh, Nissan Z that I just showed in a previous video, one or two videos ago, um, had perfectly opening and closing doors too. So when they want to, they get it spot on, don't they? Black base and the five arch wheels. Number four is the 57 Chev with the opening hood. If you have this catalog at home, just follow along so I don't have to pick it up every time. Um, I'll probably still wind up picking it up every time just out of habit super fast on the base another made in macau it's the 79 
copyright on the base, which means obviously there were ones before this, came out in a dusty rose metallic originally. Nice big fins, oversized wheels, but it's the same with anything. If you see it for the first time, then you see it for real. You think the for real one's a bit wonky. Certainly the, the way with the Corvette, wasn't it? The 78 Corvette or 79 Corvette. Amoco. Not familiar with this brand, but um, in Australia we have uh, our Australia-centric version of this in the Ampol. Same sort of thing, petrol tanker. And uh, anyone who's been collecting Matchbox for any length of time knows there's a whole ton of these to find and they're getting really pricey. This one with chrome exhaust stacks and chrome base and those very cool wheels. I think they all came out with those wheels, didn't they? Next cab off the rank or racing car off the line, number six. They just call it the racing car, F1 racing car. And, oh, I do need to pick up the catalog on this one. See the size of the three in the photo? And by the time they came to production, they changed it to a smaller three. Got some sponsors, Egypt, Pirelli, Fiat. Nice. Metal base. Sweet. Moving right along, here's a curious one. The Mazda, um, IMSA Mazda. See in the catalog, it's got opening doors, and by the time it came to market, the doors were fixed, closed. I'm yet to get to the bottom of if they ever did release an opening doors version. I don't think they did. If you know different, let me know in the comments. I'd like to have it, or at least see it, if it's out there. don't think it is. Maybe there was some problems with uh, the mechanism, and they decided to say, well, we've made the the casting for the base, we've got the wheels, we've got the interior and the windows, let's just redo the, the body itself with fixed doors. That's what I imagine is the case, but please let me know if I'm wrong. I'm often wrong and I'm often correct in the comments, I have no problem with that at all. This is the closest I have to the Rover 3500 police car. have many of it, but not exactly the one in the catalogue. Plastic base on this one, and it also came out with the civilian version in a bronzy brown with a sliding sunroof, which is really nice to have. Don't worry if some of these go out of shot because we'll do a big old pan around when I'm done. Um, next one is the AMX Javelin in the Dr Pepper livery. The side pipes Pro Stocker, they call this one. Nice. Police car, it was black and white before this, and then they gave it a splash of color. G12 on the roof for that helicopter shot. Cool gray paste, painted base on this one. That was my favorite bit about this change because. I was never really sure about this paint job. I always loved the black and whites. But uh, these look good in the fleet just the same. I think all police cars look good in the fleet. Next one is the Lamborghini Contage. First car I ever saw with a cutout floor pan. They do that a lot nowadays. Five arch wheels and metal base. And suspension but again it's a racer now remember when I was telling you about gawking at the photos for hours trying to figure out what color or what shade of something one was perfect example in the Pontiac racer now is that a match does it have gold rims like this one you see so don't drive yourself nuts about collecting absolutely everything. 
Um, another one was the Citroen. Oh, well, I think we'll get to that in um, in the next few pages. But um, where does it end? Let's get the silver one because your eyes do play tricks on you. I might do anyway, and we'll go for the silver one. If I'm wrong, whatever. I've got the gold one in the background to make us all happy and content. Oh, change the page. Something a little more traditional for Matchbox hung around for years, didn't it? Even into the 90s, the snorkel fire engine at number 13. Um, I think I got the match. Yeah, I got the match. Metro Fire Department snorkel one on the side. And uh, all the workings of the real deal. Swing and pivot. Plastic base made in China. China. Uh, oh, just to push the variant thing home. What are we looking at? We're looking at number 14, the Jeep Laredo. Love this casting. Uh, UV attacks the canopy real fast. Even worse on that side. Prefer it without the canopy, but my point is. One last thing about the variants. This is something I've just learnt uh, researching this video to get all the bits together. The variant here, folks, even if you have one that looks just like this, this shovel, it's either on a raised plinth or not. And I have one here on a raised plinth. This is a um, Japanese issue. Still made in Macau, they both are. I'll get it out and I'll show you. And you may be saying, well, what difference does it make? To some, it's all the difference in the world. This is the Japan issue, and I hope the camera sees that. I'll twist it around in the light. Look at the shovel on both. One's on a raised plinth, and one has nothing. The one on the top is without the raised plinth. One on the bottom with the raised plinth. Did I just double your search? Do you have 15 of these in different colours? And now you're thinking, the plinth, what? Now, to prove a point, do I have? Yes, I do. It's not just the Japanese one. This is the original from most other markets from the same era. And this has the raised plinth too. Sorry. So, either or, either or. I can't really tell on that photo, maybe. If there's money on it, I'd go with the plinth, but as I say, eyes deceive. Number 15, the Peugeot 205 Turbo 16. Where are you? Fantastic opening part on this one. Oh, back end swings up. Really nice. Shell on the side, 205 and Michelin. It's got a white plastic base. Now the scale on this is 1 to 55 in a 1984 copyright. Not aware of variants on that one, but give it a week. Number 16 is the Pontiac. They just call it the Pontiac. It's the T-roofed version of one of these ones in uh, grey. Eagle on the side, flaming chicken as they call it on the bonnet. I kind of resent the term flaming chicken because I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I was push biking through a service station way back when in the 80s in New Zealand and saw somebody filling up with that flaming chicken on the bonnet and I just thought, how bold do you need to be to put that on a car? London bus. You love New York. Well, I don't have a New York one. I have the, this is the closest I have to it. Niagara Falls. It's close, isn't it? Um, didn't they trot the variants out on this? All they needed to do was uh, switch the sticker. Bomb. New casting. That was number 17. Number 18, fire engine. Um, do we have a match? Probably not. No. That's a darker red, and mine has the shield on the door. Fire department. Extending ladder. Three axles. Lovely shiny base to dazzle you. 
really nice. It's a good looking fire engine that one. Fire truck, where are you from? And Peter Boop's cement truck is at number 19. Uh, this one with the chrome stacks, same as the tanker. This casting also comes with the dump truck, doesn't it? Uh, and the tow truck. Many, many to find. Really love this casting. Moving right along, number 20 is the Volvo container truck. And we've got cold fresh on the side. Plastic box on the back. But there's a lot of metal to this one. Nothing cold or fresh in the back. Classic. Number 21 is the breakdown van. They changed the Chevy van, didn't they? Um, everybody loves their Chevy van. This has got a funky little thing going on. Press the roof piece down to pick the car up. So much more detail. Oh, so much more working parts back then. Grey painted base. Blue tinted windows to get the cherries on the top. 24 hour service. Great looking vehicle. 22 is the Jaguar XK120. Where are you? Step forward. Ta -da. Oh, yes. I was going to say I have the wrong colour interior, but I don't. I do on one of these. We'll get to it. Yeah, number 22. 414 on the side. Metal base made in Thailand. It's like they were doing a shop around in the 80s. Who is going to make our cars for us? Beautiful. There's a lot of uh, premier um, variants of this, isn't there, with the rubber tyres and the slightly more detailed interiors. Dump truck, we mentioned that earlier. So we've got three of the four variants already on the table. This is the yellow Peterbilt dump truck. All chrome. Even the dude behind the wheel is chrome. This is part of the guts of the truck. But thankfully they didn't change up these wheels. They look great. Number 24, Datsun. Where are you? 280ZX and opening parts. Slight decal difference between mine and the one in the catalogue. Right hand drive, see if I can get close up of that. 50-50 whether these doors are going to close and uh, I feel like it's a big risk every time I open them. <laughs> Metal base on this, black all the way in that tan interior. Really such a good colour scheme. Number 25 is the Audi Quattro, next row, that's a beauty. No lifting hatch on this one like the Supra, uh, which is coming up sooner or later. As I scan the mess around me, amber headlights, same as the windshield and metal base. Next is another truck to go with our first one, this is a triaxle. Ferrymasters Groupage Services in number 26, the Volvo Tilt Truck. Nothing tilts randomly. Yeah. Plastic bit comes off, but again, you want to be careful. Things this old, you're going to snap some clips if you're ripping things on and off all day. Swing Wing Jet is number 27. Curious thing, the wheels were always too big. And uh, again, a working piece, so it's pretty impressive. Jet set on the wings. Crazily red tinted cockpit window. Pop in there. Number 28, Dodge Daytona. Opening part on this one. A metal opening part. Now the one, oh, I do have, I was going to say the one in the photo has dot dash, but huh, I had a variant to show off, but uh, I have the one in the photo anyway. 
Look at the lengths they went to for that opening part. Two rivets, plastic, double hinge. You can see why they, why they dumbed it down to either zero moving parts or charging your double for a moving part and then uh, not even getting them right these days half the time. So uh, yeah, you can see why moving parts went the way of the dinosaur. Uh, what are we up to? Number 29, the shovel tractor. Curiously one of my favorites to collect. There are so many of these out there. This is one of the originals. I think it came out in about 79, didn't it? Uh, yeah, is that 79 on the base? 78 maybe. Matchbox Toys Limited. Made in Macau. Yeah, came out in all kinds of fancy colours. Last one of this page, number 30, the Mercedes G Wagon. And this one, the rescue unit. I saw a box set for sale on eBay very recently when I was putting this video together um, of an ambulance, a white ambulance version of this. And that's the way they get you, because the only way you're going to get that particular casting is if you buy a very expensive box set. And uh, the one I was looking at was even too pricey for my stupidity. <laughs> Next page, um, Mazda RX-7, not to be confused with the Datsun I showed earlier. Um, different. It's different. Here's me giving you a lecture about not worrying about variants or being too bothered with the detail of the variants, the nitty gritty, and here I am worrying about the nitty gritty. Right hand drive, not a bad interior. It's called the way the tail lights are part of the interior. It has had a slight fender bender with a green car by the look of it. Or an old person in a green coat. Take your pick. Get a base. Sweet. Where does that go? I might have to uh, stop the camera momentarily to tidy up the, the table, but we'll soldier on. Number 32 is the excavator. And the matching theme. So if you're into collecting construction vehicles, they'll look really cool. Quite a few moving parts on this one. You really can dig in the dirt with these, and uh, I'm sure many of them were lost in gardens all around the world. It's part of the fun, isn't it? Number 43 is the Mercedes AMG. Is it? No, it's not. Number 33, folks, the police motorcycle. I bet you thought I didn't have all of these, but I do. Not going to jump that far ahead. Uh, police bike. Now you'll see that Mr. Plod is not hanging on to the handlebars. He's doing what every teenage kid does on their new mountain bike. Um, I don't want to put those very delicate looking hands on these metal bars because sooner or later his fingers will fall off. Not on my watch. And uh, do we have, yeah, we have a variant. The plastic man has stripes and a white helmet. And actually, yeah, there's plenty going on that is different. But we'll forgive ourselves. And he stands up. But we'll get him out of the way because he's just going to fall down. Number 34 is the Chevy Pro Stocker to go with our Javelin earlier in the Pepsi livery. Pepsi Challenger. 14 on the side. And black shiny base made in Macau. Side pipes are great on that aren't they? Next is the Mini Camper. Aspen Ski Holidays on the side. It's probably a real company or at least was. Uh, most of what Matchbox do pertains to a, a real thing in the real world which is kind of funky. Even if you, you don't know what it is, you know, there's a level of authenticity, I suppose, uh, beyond what you see. Um, and that's got the same wheels as the Jeep, I think, or similar. 
Who's next? The refuse truck at number 36. So many opening parts and things on this. It's so cool. You see the switch on the side there. Actually shoves the, the garbage out the back when it's full. Hopefully in the right spot. Even blue gets UV damage. This was clearly in a window box like this. Facing the wrong way. If um, if I was going to choose between getting a variant of this and getting one that doesn't have the UV, I'd probably go for the one that doesn't have the UV because it bothers me more with damaged cars than it does getting everything. If that makes sense. Number 37, Ford Escort Cabriolet. Cabriolet. Try saying that if you're an Anglophone. Uh, there again, we have the squinty eyes. Um, is that the right shade of blue for that XR3i on the side? I want to believe it is, but maybe it's not. Who knows? As long as you're happy, Tyrone. Metal base, made in Macau, Ford Escort. I was thrilled when that came out. Um, next is. Oh, we're going from the side now. Confuse myself. 38, the Model A van. Didn't they trot this one out? There must be a thousand different ones of this. Nice heavy casting. It actually looks pretty good with those back wheels. Matchbox Speed Shop on the box. And a nice blue. They all came with plastic body. You wouldn't want it metal body. It would be quite heavy in the end. 1979. Copyright on the base. And number 39, BMW 323i. Oh, case in point. I was telling you about the, um, the variant as opposed to getting one that doesn't have any UV damage. Until this weekend, um, my version of this had a melted in roof. Just that black front bar to the windshield was pushed down. Looked like it had just been sitting in the sun and melted down. And uh, I found one that wasn't like that and I had to get it. Solid little car and they came out together didn't they? And then there was a blue one of this and yada yada yada. Love them. Really love them. Moving right along. Almost up to our AMG that I try to skip you to. Number 14 the rocket launcher. And of course this isn't the original rubber band that would have frayed and popped off and dropped away probably 20 years ago. <laughs> but um, looking pretty good. This is the NASA version. Blue tint and uh, that rocket is almost unyellowed by the UV. Monkey. Number 41, Racing Porsche. Lots of races in this. Lots of races. And this is about the third variant, I think, of this particular casting. Maybe more. And then, of course, there are more and more in the gift sets through the years. Nice. Mobile Crane at number 42. And what is that? The third construction type vehicle. This has got the whole pack body and I've just swapped out the dump truck for the Reynolds Crane Hire Swively fella. Plastic base, big old wheels. And finally we get to our AMG, number 43, the Mercedes. Such a beefy Merc, isn't it? Real stonker. Metal on metal, opening doors, eight dot wheels. What is there not to love about this car? You hear that satisfying clunk. Not so much on that side. But yeah, stonking great German car. And the metal uh, rear view mirrors too, which is great. Citroen 1.5, step forward please. Now this Mm, is it black or is it blue? I have the black and then I have the blue 
And then I was looking at one catalogue, um, deciding which catalogue to do one of these videos on, and uh, I realised the one I had in my hand had a red interior. It's like, oh geez, here's me thinking there are two to collect. And of course this looks like it's got black interior, and this one has grey, and on and on. <laughs> Great looking car though. Very classic, isn't it? Um, up to the trucks, we've got a Kenworth Cabover Aerodyne at number 45 in red with sort of uh, complementary colours to lift up that red even more. Looks good. One of my favourite cabs, this uh, Kenworth. Sweet. And of course, many, many trailers to go with it. Uh, number 46 is the Sorber Racer, yet another racer. This one in black, um, I think the original was the BASF uh, blue liveried one. But this is the Castrol in black on the white. Number 61, can't remember what the original one was. I have it somewhere, but that'll be for another catalogue review. The Jaguar SS100. Apparently it wasn't very popular because of the SS thing, but um, people are sensitive at certain times in history. Awesome looking steering wheel. If you're going to do a convertible, put a steering wheel like that in it. Fantastic. It is still part of the, the interior, but it's poking through a metal dash, which is really interesting. And uh, you get the windshield, but no windshield glass. It's just the suggestion of protection from flying bugs. Plastic inserted base on this one, but quite a bit of weight there. Really nice. Love the grill on these two. And last one for this page, um, before I think we clean up the table, number 48 is the Unimog. And then we'll get to something really funky, but stay with me, I'll clean up the table. It'll take one split second. You won't even have time to make a cuppa. This is the Rescue Unimog at number 48. Um, Unimogs and Mercedes, isn't it? Do we have? Yes, we get the Mercedes badge. And a uh, cool snow shovel on the front. Not as much weight as you'd think, because there's a lot of plastic on this. The chassis is plastic. Those side boards, the rhubar, ball bar, whatever you want to call it, is plastic. So is the shovel, so is the canopy. So. Lots of plastic, but still looks very funky. There you see, all nice and tidy. Beautiful. Shall we continue? We'll continue with number 49, the Dune Man. B-dub Dune Man in red. Can't remember if it was green or brown the first time round, but when they came out in red, I was uh, not collecting anymore in the 80s, so I missed out completely. And then when I saw it recently, I had to pick it up. This one has a brown interior by the look of it. Mine has white. So uh, clearly haven't finished the job, have I? Number 50 is the Chevy Blazer. It's the Sheriff Man with a very delicate aerial. I'd rather they didn't. And uh, a few years after this, they stopped, didn't they? They stopped giving us the aerial. They took that mount piece off the chassis and everybody was happy. SP7 on the roof. Blue tint to get the light bar blue. Made in Macau plastic base and a 83 copyrighted base by the looks. Big chunky mama. Put him over there next to his policeman friend and move on to number 51, the Pontiac Firebird in black. There is a blue and red, I think, one out there that I've been searching for for a bit. Maybe because I can't quite remember the combo, the color combo. I can't um, find it. <laughs> I keep I keep asking uh, the eBay search engine the wrong question. No, cannot be find, found. No matches. So I'll have to refine my search or uh, just randomly spot it at a convention somewhere. Lovely. 
so solid, so well built. Next is number 51, the BMW M1 in yellow, with number 11 on the side. Here she blows. Big wide vehicle. The real thing didn't really get legs because BMW was a little bit half-hearted about what this car's job was. They did make some or try to make some into production, but um, yeah, it was a bit confused as to what niche of the market it was filling and uh, nobody really got behind it. Unfortunately, it's a cool looking car. Number 53 is the flare side pickup. Started out life as the Baja Bouncer. There it is there in a lovely yellow with blue and blue. That came out with the eight dot wheels originally. Really nice. Had much more suspension than that, but of course the wheels were much smaller, so the travel traveled. Pop him next to the Beamer. Um, where are you? The foam, mon foam monitor? I don't remember that. I remember the car, but uh, oh. Metro Airport on the side, Unit 3 foam, and a water cannon or a foam cannon on the roof. Started out as a motorhome, which I adored when I was a kid. With the opening door on the side to boot. Metal base, big heavy thing. You can see where the mechanism for the uh, door sat, but no need for it on this one because they welded it shut. So many iterations of that. I keep bleating about variations, don't worry about them, but then you get hooked in yourself and you say, well, I want them all now. Ford Sierra at number 55, XR4i. It's funny how um, anytime there's a new innovation on a real car, they've got to throw it up on the side so everybody sees that it's injected or common rail diesel or whatever it is. They used to brag about how many turbos a car had and now it's all very discreet, isn't it? Fantastic casting. This shook my world when it came out in the like uh, slightly off-white with the light grey plastic bottom. Fantastic car. Wonderful. Number 56 is the VW Golf GTI and uh, we've got eight dots in the photo but we've got the older style wheels there. I wanted to show off that I do have the eight dot wheels but boom, boom, these are gold and these are clearly not gold. So I thought, well, I'll leave it in the box because I want to do a, a 80s peg hunting video. And uh, that will probably be in it. But at least I've got a few seconds in the sun today. I've got to open a part on this one. If I can open it for you. Maybe not. Oh, there you go. Weren't missing much. It's a solidly painted number. The old east-west engine. Metal base. Solid as, but completely out of scale. Did they tell us the scale? No. But you can see it's sort of in the realm of the Peugeot, isn't it? So if you're into your races, or hot hatches, whatever you want to call them. Number 57 is the Mission Helicopter. And I love telling you how many names this has got. So I call it the Apache, but most people that commented on my various shows talking about this, because I love it so much, um, called it the Blue Thunder Helicopter, and I thought that actually trumps Apache. But uh, no matter what, it's super cool. And uh, we've, we've got the old style helicopter coming up in this show on the last page, I think. But this is the big change, wasn't it? And they've done a casting change since, so you can't pull out that windshield. Uh, the skis are a bit smaller, I think, and also the propeller is, or the rotor blade, is shorter. Everything's slightly different, but they, they kind of kept the character of it. There must be 50 of these around the place today. Uh, not circling overhead, obviously, just in a drawer. Number 58, Rough Trek. An old favourite, an old friend. 217 on the side of this one. Um, yep, yeah, Red Interior. 
to match the bull bar in the spotty rack. You wouldn't call that a roll cage, would you? A roll bar. The leverage that would get on it if it dug into the dirt as you tipped. Be quite phenomenal. Give you a bit of whiplash. Metal base in the vat of the side pipes and the ultra funky eight dots. They really suit this thing. Go next to the Blue Thunder. I've lost my spot now. Oh, the Porsche number 59, Porsche 928. Step forward. This is probably the best big door Matchbox ever did. So I jam my clumsy fingernails in there and rip those doors open for you. Perfect steering wheel, albeit on a red interior. And uh, these, as I cringe as I close that door, try to, there it goes. No clunk, but it's closed nice and straight, so I'm happy. <laughs> the uh, decals on these almost never turned out well, but this one is pretty good. She's a keeper. Metal base. Something about the painted base. After so many years we had of unpainted base, and then when they finally decided to start painting them, it was a real treat. A wonderful suspension on those. Um, we've got a hatchback in the Toyota Supra, number 60. A little bit of UV damage on my version, but it's pretty close to the photo. And strangely UV damage on the paintwork. There was never any window glass in this hatch, but uh, funky as you like. Plastic base, twire on the base, twire. Next is number 61, the Peterbilt wreck truck. We've got them all now. All we're missing is the, uh, the truck cab with the trailers, but we've got all these chassis variants. This one with the orange boom. Um, what is that? San Francisco Police Department on the side. M9 or 6W. It's an M9, isn't it? Big shield on the on the door. Um, see what I mean about the exhaust stacks? Chrome versus matte grey or unfinished, whatever you want to call it. The driver in there is matte grey as opposed to the chrome we've been seeing all day. Sometimes just that alone is the variant and uh, makes you wonder, do I chase everything? Probably. Number 62, the Chevy Corvette in blue and that's a T-roof. They, they don't call it a tear roof in this catalogue, sometimes they did. There she blows. The original was the best, but this is not bad either. Fantastic. That's Med Macal. Look at that. I'll put you down the story so you can bask in the beauty of this 1986-87 Matchbox catalog. We remind ourselves so we don't forget of how lucky we are to be able to collect these. Number 63, 4x4 open truck, open back truck. Kind of looking like a Toyota Hilux in my humble. Metal base, Ben Macau. Huge, stonking great thing. Number 63, you get the spare wheel. Lovely bits of detail. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to fathom how these things have uh, survived all these years in such good nick. Number 64 is the Dodge van with yet another mind-blowing opening part. Another one that shook my world when I first saw it. How did they do that? I spent all afternoon opening and closing that door. Lovely deep dark red interior too. Fantastic. So 80s. Incredible. Number 65 is a plane transporter. A rescue plane transporter. I don't know about you, but if, if I was stuck anywhere needing a rescue, I'd be saying, please don't send that damn jet. Use the helicopter. But I, I suppose if the jet was all I had, all right, send it. 
it goes well with the NASA. And of course there's all sorts of military and all sorts isn't there out there now to find. I'll pop him over there. I um, when I unmangled the tabletop um, I went to put it in one through whatever number we were up to when I paused um, and realized it didn't look great so I've, I've put the tool kids at the back of the photo. Um, number 66 the Tyrone Malone super boss, super boss. I was going to say super bus, but it is the super boss. Um, I think I got this one right. Same wheels, same tint, same everything. Funky looking truck. There's a black one too, and uh, probably other things that I haven't witnessed yet with my beady little eyes. Dazzle you with the Oh, so shiny base in chrome. A racing truck. It'll be the first thing I grab the keys to if somebody says, do you want to race, mate? Yeah, let's go for the truck. Number 67, IMSA Mustang. This is probably the furthest away from the catalog I have. Sorry to disappoint. You've probably switched off already. Number 67, it's the Mustang, back one on the back end. And opening part, if we can get it to do, oh gee whiz, really want it to open, want it to fly off into the wind. Close that very gingerly. Metal base, chrome pipes, chrome engine. Yeah, fantastic. Number 68 is a 4x4 Chevy van and uh, close but no cigar. We see the difference. If you look too closely, you'll probably see a difference on everything I've shown you today. It's all been a foil. Number 68, Matchbox Motorsports. Plastic base by this stage. This one's made in Thailand. The original was not 4x4, was it? It was the uh, orange van. Had different size wheels but back to front and then uh, they went for the vampire the silver one before they went crazy jacked up but that's a nice casting I like those ones Nine, uh, number 69 is number uh, where are we number not number yeah 83 Corvette and uh, yeah it's a bit of a departure from my favorite version of the Matchbox Corvette. Um, a bit plasticky, but uh, still a great looking car. Really nice. Sweet. Number 70, Ferrari 308 GTB. This one with the Pioneer livery, number 39. Gave it to us in straight red with black interior, I believe, originally. Something stuck on the bottom there. Might be the price sticker. I think I got this from a convention. Yeah. Magnum PI made that one famous. Good on him. Scania truck at number 71. It's the Scania T142. And uh, that might have been a new casting for that year because I feel like that's the first color it came out in, but might be a year or two off. Really nice, really nice. We're crowding out the front. Um, I'll do a big pan around at the end of this show, which is only a few away. Hang in there, Judd, um, Dodge delivery truck. Number 72, this one that hurts, van and truck rental on the side. Plastic box, we can, no. do we need to see the nothingness? You know there's nothing in there, I promise there's nothing in there. Plastic chassis, but uh, there's enough metal on here to give it a bit of weight, but it's okay. Number 73 is the model A Ford. Second one I'm showing you today, but the first one had a box on the back. Remember? I've kept the funky wheels on this, makes it look so much better. 
Still a lot of weight to this, same as the box truck or box van. Plastic base, 79 Baden Macau. Quite often you see these secondhand and they've got a light missing or the edge of the bumper missing, but this one's good. Uh, number 74 is a Fiat, little Fiat to Bath. And I don't have the Italia version, I have the Matchbox version with its oh so common um, smear marks, smudgings. But these are getting hard to find now, so I'm quite happy with this one. If I do see the others or see an immaculate one, I'll snap it up, but yeah, hard to come by. Nobody wants to get them up. Oops, scan here, get back there. Number 75, your lucky last, is the helicopter, which really caught my attention when it came out when I was a youngin. There's a dude behind the, the stick, it's going to say wheel, but you know better. Rescue on the side, and there is so many different ones out there of this helicopter. This one's got a black base, the one in the photo's got the orange base, but I forgive myself. And I hope you forgive me too. Should we flick through the rest of this catalogue while we're here? Start your own Matchbox model collection. No need for encouragement here, folks. And some new ones for 88. 88. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. We'll cover as many catalogues as I can in the future. But, um, oh, I could have done those pages. Not quite. I'm working on it. And those love the team transport. Team matchbox, they were calling it that year. Fantastic. I actually tried to recreate this scene in my backyard as a kid, and not all the cars came back. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think I had them all when I set out there with that mission in mind, but I guarantee all of them did not come back. My brother probably ran one of them over in his real car. What's, what are you doing in my parking spot? Right, let's go upstairs so you can have a, a big old eagle eye around the joint. And my camera's just about to die. So we'll be quick about it. Hope you enjoyed this show. Subscribe, it's free. I love bringing these to you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.